The world we live in is old, like over four and a half billion years old, and we've only been around for a tiny fraction of that time. Some bizarre, funny, and outright terrifying life forms have roamed the earth for far longer than us though, unchanged since the times of the dinosaurs and beyond. So grab your backpack and get ready for an adventure because we're about to go and find some amazing ancient creatures that are still alive today. Gargantuan Gar For over a hundred million years, a curious creature that looks more mythical than real has lurked in the freshwater lakes and swamps of Southern America. No, this isn't the love child of a crocodile and a koi carp. It's an alligator gar, and it's one very big boy. Most of the time, they grow to just over six feet long. That's taller than your average dad, and reach over 100 pounds. That's lighter than your average mom. However, some can get much bigger, like this brood, which was almost eight and a half feet and weighed a whopping 327 pounds. Still lighter than your mom, at least. As well as being bulky boys, two rows of slender fang-like teeth line the inside of their crocodilian mouths, making them formidable predators. While hunting, the gars lie perfectly still in the water and silently wait until an unsuspecting fish swims by. Then, snap! They lunge forward and spear it between their powerful jaws. And because their bodies are protected by tough overlapping scales that work the same as medieval chainmail, gars have very few natural predators. Even their eggs are poisonous, so any would-be pilferers have learned to leave them alone. As strong as these defenses are though, overfishing and the destruction of their habitats has led to alligator gar numbers sadly dwindling in recent times. And although I'd be terrified if one swam up next to me, I don't wanna see such an ancient species disappear. So hopefully I will see you later, alligator. Gar. Living Lamprey. Over in the northern and western Atlantic Ocean, a strange monster has skulked around in the waters for over 450 million years. The most primitive of all living vertebrates, this eel-like beastie is called a sea lamprey. And despite only growing to around three and a half feet long, it's still absolutely horrifying. As well as their flexible, twisty bodies, lampreys are known for the grisly rows of sharp, rasping teeth that line the inside of their mouths. Those scary incisors aren't controlled by a traditional jaw, but instead a round sucker-like disc. They latch onto other fish using this before chewing through their scales with their rough, abrasive tongue and parasitically leaching blood off them. By releasing a special mucus into the wound, the lampreys prevent the host fish's blood from clotting too, and can feed like this until they're full. Ugh, thank God these things aren't as big as we are. Not much feeds on the lampreys though, which is one of the reasons they've enjoyed so long on this planet. Having said that, you're always gonna get some weirdos, like the Netherlands-based Sea Lamprey Society, which consists of a group of 40 people who meet up to honor the nightmare fish by, yep, eating it. I mean, salted sea lamprey does look delicious, but I just don't think it's for me. Would you try it? Something you should definitely try though is hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I'm always uploading exciting new content to the channel and you really won't want to miss some of the stuff I've got planned. All done? Okay, on with the safari. Charmin Pangolin If you saw this little guy running around, I wouldn't blame you for thinking it was an armadillo. The two species look pretty similar and they both love eating insects, but that's where the similarities end. This armored mammal is actually a pangolin and they've been on earth for around 80 million years a whole 30 million years longer than armadillos. Found across Africa and Asia, they spend their time both on the ground and, despite their looks, climbing up trees hunting for food. A hell of a lot of food too. Pangolins use their long tongues to chow down on around 70 million ants and termites a year, which regulates insect populations and does wonders for the ecosystem they're in. Despite this, the cute critters have been hunted so extensively, they're almost extinct. In China and Vietnam, their meat is considered a delicacy. And in many Asian and African cultures, pangolin scales are believed to have medicinal properties too. Exacerbating the problem, the poor pangolins are harmless to humans and if approached, will just curl up into an armored ball. Sure, this works against their natural predators, but poachers need only pick them up and carry them off to be butchered. Thankfully, it's not all bad news. China raised its protection for Chinese pangolins to the highest level in 2020, as well as banning the use of their scales in traditional medicines. How anyone could even think of killing these adorable animals is beyond me, though. 
I mean, just look at them. Honkin' Hudson. During the Eocene epoch, between 56 and 34 million years ago, a whole host of weird animals roamed the Earth. Many of these are long extinct, but one funny-looking bird called the Hotsen remains in surprisingly strong numbers. Found across Colombia, these feathered flyers are striking to look at, but even more striking to smell. Yep, they absolutely reek. This is because Hotsen are ruminators, meaning they digest their food with the help of bacterial fermentation. Instead of stomachs, Hotsen pass food into a muscular pouch in their neck called a crop. Once there, the food, which is mostly leaves, is fermented by enzyme-producing bacteria. These enzymes break the leaves down, but at the same time, produce a disgusting mix of bacterial vapors that the birds burp out. And it's not just one or two burps. Oh no, the whole smelly process can take up to 45 hours. What's more, their crops are so bloated the whole time that the birds can't fly while they digest. So for two days straight, the Hotsen just sits around eating, belching, and sleeping. Hmm. Sounds like a good weekend. Supersized Salamander. Everyone loves frogs. They're cute, friendly, and eat flies. How couldn't you? But there's another amphibian that makes frogs look basic. Whoa, this guy is the Chinese giant salamander, and the name's not an exaggeration. They can reach a colossal six feet long, making them the world's largest living amphibians. Just check out the size of that hand. The weird fleshy beings have lived for an incredibly long time too, over 170 million years in fact, though there were far more of them back then. Once found across much of China, the giant salamanders have since been hunted ruthlessly for their meat. Now less than 50,000 are left, sporadically located in forested rivers and streams around the country. To make matters worse, some of them have genetic mutations causing bright orange skin making them incredibly easy for hunters to spot. The non-orange survivors do have one trick up their sleeve to evade hunters though, their excellent camouflage. When lying still at the bottom of a river, their grayish brown bodies blend perfectly in with the rocks and mud around them. And because they absorb oxygen straight through their skin without needing gills, they don't produce any telltale air bubbles either. Talk about covert. But I guess you can only be so covert when you're literally the biggest species in your entire animal class. <sighs> Being super swole can be such a curse. Trust me, I know. Ghost Shark. A dizzying 8,500 feet down in the darkest depths of the oceans lurk one of the oldest, spookiest creatures on this planet. No, it's not an actual ghost, but the chimera or ghost shark is just as scary. The spectral fish grow to almost five feet long and have a nasty venomous spine in front of their dorsal fin, which they use to defend themselves against predators. When hunting, however, chimera have a much more advanced method of attack. The inky blackness all around them makes trying to see useless. So chimera utilize special receptors in their skin that can detect the faintest electrical fields, like those caused by muscle contractions. If you as much as wiggled a finger from 10 feet away, they'd know exactly where you were. Fortunately, Chimera have no interest in anything bigger than octopi, and despite their reputation, are harmless to humans. They're technically not even sharks, just relatives of them. Besides, the male has a retractable, er, uh, sexual appendage on its forehead. So if you still needed a reason not to fear these things, they're literally dickheads. Even if they were mega dangerous though, would you ever casually find yourself nearly 10,000 feet underwater? Their habitat is so hard to reach that barely anyone's seen the mysterious sea creepers, despite them being around for the last 280 million years. And that's roughly 140 times longer than humans have existed for. So all you introverts take note, the best excuse for missing a party is living at the bottom of the ocean. Crusty Crab. While Chimera might be almost impossible to catch a glimpse of, other ancient beings are less elusive like horseshoe crabs, which you can find scuttling across the beaches of Southeast Asia, the Atlantic, and Gulf Coast of North America. Despite the name, horseshoe crabs are more closely related to scorpions and spiders than crabs. And though they can grow to an intimidating 19 inches, the creatures lack a bite or sting. That scary looking spike on their back is actually just a tail, which they use to flip themselves back upright if they get knocked over. The shelled critters scurry about shallow coastal waters, finding worms, clams, and algae to crush with their legs before passing to their mouths to eat. Their heads house far more than just their mouths, though. 
and actually contain most of their vital organs too. Most, but not all. Horseshoe crabs have an impressive 10 eyes. These two lateral eyes work alongside the other eight on the rest of the body to make the crabs highly sensitive to light. This not only allows them to locate mates in the dark, but also means they're highly tuned to the lunar cycle, which dictates when they lay their eggs. And that impeccable eyesight is obviously no gimmick. The archaic animals have existed for over 300 million years, making them over 50 million years older than the dinosaurs. Craziest of all, throughout that whole time, they've hardly changed. So if you were hoping for evidence of any huge ones like these, I'm afraid they've never been this big. And these are likely just model recreations. Well, either that or that's just a really tiny kid. Old Timey Taper If you've ever wondered what I look like at 6 a.m. when my alarm goes off, then look no further than this image. Okay, so that's not actually me, but it is an exceedingly weird mammal called a taper. These ancient beings have patrolled the earth for some 20 million years, presumably giving cavemen just as much of a laugh as they've given me. Most of them live in South America, aside from the Malayan taper, which can be found across Asia. All species of taper, however, are herbivores and spend most of their time waddling around forests in search of food. That goofy nose gives them an amazing sense of smell, which they use to find trails left by other tapers that often lead to prime vegetation spots. But their nose isn't just for smelling. They also use it to reach up and pluck tasty shoots from trees to munch on. So they're not just a pretty face. Sadly though, the forests where they live are being cleared to make way for houses and farmland, meaning there are less of these funny fellas roaming around than ever before. Man, I really didn't want this comedy to end in a tragedy. Nifty Nautilus. It's hard to imagine anything existing as far back as half a billion years ago, never mind something that still lives today. However, the alien-like chambered Nautilus has swum beneath our oceans this entire time, witnessing three ice ages and outliving countless other less fortunate species. But how did something as defenseless as an underwater mollusk outlive the dinosaurs? After all, when the asteroid hit Earth 66 million years ago and wiped most complex life out, the oceans were devastated too, right? That's true, however, some deep sea dwellers were protected from the blast and sustained themselves off a steady trickle of dead organisms that sank down from the surface. So, life found a way. And the chambered nautilus looks almost identical after all these years too, save for one difference. It used to be a whole lot bigger, a gargantuan 11 feet in diameter in fact. Now it's barely eight inches, but it still functions much the same. That beautiful shell has several hollow chambers inside it, the biggest of which the Nautilus spends most of its time in. Tissue called siphuncle links all these chambers together, and the creature has a surprisingly clever way of using the siphuncle in tandem with its shell to get around. First, it moves its body from the biggest chamber to just outside it, so seawater rushes in. Then the Nautilus uses its siphuncle to quickly pull its body back into the chamber, forcing the water out again at great speed and propelling the entire mollusk backwards. Pretty impressive, right? What's more, to adjust its overall buoyancy, it can also use its siphuncle to either suck fluid out or draw it into the smaller chambers. Like this, Nautilus expertly maneuver around the water, smelling out shrimp, crabs, and other small marine animals to prey on. Hmm, kinda makes me wish I had a siphuncle. Lord knows I love me some seafood. Wacky Wabagong. Compared to some of the things we've seen, it'd be easy to say the oddly named Wabagong shark is just a baby. I mean, it's only been around for a measly 11 and a half million years. But let me remind you that's still almost six times longer than we've been walking around for. And this is just too weird not to mention. Spending most of their time on the ocean floor around Indonesia and Australia, Wabagongs use their convincing camouflage to lie and wait for their prey. Then when something gets close, they expand their huge throats and suck in pretty much everything they can manage. Small crustaceans don't stand a chance, but even pufferfish and other types of sharks aren't off the menu. This lucky Wabagong managed to snag a young black tip reef shark for lunch. Thankfully, the kooky creatures are generally considered harmless to humans. But if you make the mistake of stepping on one, you can expect a nasty bite. Those sharp fangs are nothing to scoff at, especially when coupled with the Wabagong's powerful jaws. But the worst thing wouldn't be the physical pain. No, it'd be the humiliation of being bested by something that looks like it should have been flushed down Jabba the Hutt's toilet. Squid out of hell. Classic images of hell usually depict a Satan-like figure subjecting the damned to eternal torture. They don't often feature squids. 
but maybe they should. This uniquely malevolent looking mollusk has patrolled the deep seas for 165 million years and has the Latin name Vampirotuthis infernalis, which literally translates to vampire squid from hell. Cool. Fortunately, it's not actually a blood-sucking undead squid sent by the devil. Instead, its name refers to those cloak-like web tentacles and its red body. Rather than blood, the vampire squid lives on a somewhat less scary diet of, well, poop. Not out of choice though, mind you. You see, because it lives so deep, oxygen is a real scarcity. This means expending energy to chase prey would exhaust what little oxygen the squid has and it would die. Therefore, it makes more sense to conserve oxygen by drifting around and scrounging whatever to try to sick and find, which is more often than not, poop. Having said that, the vampire squid isn't a complete couch potato. It has a top secret weapon, its skin. Light producing organs called photophores cover it and by activating them, the resulting light show lures in unsuspecting prey for the squid to snatch. Kind of like going to a fireworks show then realizing you're the big finale. Damn, so that's why satanic Squidward invited me out next Friday. Terrific Tuatara. If you're into mysticism, you've probably heard of the third eye. Often depicted on the forehead, it symbolizes enlightenment and supernatural powers. The Tuatara must be really enlightened then, because this reptile has a third eye slap bang on the top of its head, and it's had one for the last 240 million years. Found only in New Zealand, Tuataras are a highly unique species. They might look like lizards, but they're actually more closely related to an extinct group of reptiles from the age of the dinosaurs. Unlike lizards, tuataras are nocturnal, have three rows of saw-like teeth which they use to grind up bugs and prefer cool weather. Oh, and yeah, they've got three eyes. That third one is called the parietal eye, and though it has a retina, lens, and nerve endings, it isn't used for seeing. When a tuatara is only a few months old, scales and pigments grow over the eye, covering it and making it hard to distinguish from the rest of the reptile's body. So what's the point of an eye that can't see? Well, although it's technically blind, it is light sensitive, and scientists reckon this extra light sense helps the tuatara navigate and tell what time of day it is. Unfortunately, it doesn't help it predict the future or the rare species would have left New Zealand long ago. That's because when humans arrived on the island around 1200 AD, they brought non-native species like dogs and rats with them, which over the years have ravaged the Tuatara population. Where once there were millions of the ancient critters, now less than 80,000 remain. So spare a thought for the poor Tuataras. For all their eyes, they couldn't see that coming. Creepy Crocodilian over in some parts of India and Nepal, there's an ancient being so rare that today, less than 250 of them are left in the world. These creepy creatures are gharials, and they've dwelled in the Earth's rivers for some 200 million years. That long, thin snout differentiates the beast from a crocodile or alligator, and they have far more teeth too, about 110. All this makes them perfectly adapted to catch their favorite food, fish. As well as enabling them to slice through water, the narrow snouts are also covered in sensory cells that can detect vibrations. Once they sense something, they whip their heads, they don't have hair, back and forth in the water and zero in on their fishy prey. Then they open their jaws and bite down hard, trapping anything unfortunate enough to get near. They're not just killing machines though. Gariels also have time for some sweet, sweet lovin'. In fact, they're the only crocodilian with any recognizable difference between males and females. That odd little bump is called a gara, and it's only present on the dudes, presumably to avoid any awkward unintended bromances. As seems to be the running theme though, gharials have not had a good relationship with humans, suffering hugely at our hands. Overfishing has left rivers devoid of prey, and they're hunted extensively for their fat, which is used in traditional medicine. So there's really no need to ask them why they've got such long faces. Chills and frills. If you're easily scared, you might wanna look away right about now. Well, I did warn you. This horrifying nightmare maker isn't part of the latest Jaws sequel. It's called a frilled shark and it's very, very real. Growing to a monstrous six feet in length, the eel-like creatures can be found lurking in the cold, dark depths of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They're so named for their freaky, frill-like gills, but it's the red teeth that disturb me more, and that serpentine way they move through the water. 
I will not be sleeping well tonight. Due to the extreme environment that sharks live in, we know very little about them. They're pretty slow swimmers though, so probably aren't as deadly as they look. In fact, I bet they'd swim away scared if they saw you. Not much can survive below 3,000 feet where they live, so we'd be huge in comparison with the squid and little fish they're used to. However, that doesn't stop this 99 million year old horror from looking like a frustratingly hard boss in a Tomb Raider game. Only rather than trying to fight it, I'd be swimming away in terror and leaving a suspicious yellow trail in my wake. Alrighty then, on that pant wedding note, we've reached the end of our prehistoric safari. Have you seen any of these in real life? And did I miss any you'd include? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.